Thank you for clicking this video because today we're talking about the economy and what might just be the biggest threats or challenges facing it. And of course, I'm here with my good friend Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services, a retirement income store located in Melbourne, Florida. Jeff, as usual, always great to see you. It's great to be here, Dave. And we also want to bring in today's special guest, economist Mark Faber. He's also the publisher of the Gloom, Boom, and Doom newsletter, which you can get by going to gloomboomdoom.com. Mark, thanks so much for being back with us on the Income Generation. Well, thank you very much for having me on your program. Mark, lately we've seen people in the grocery stores here in America doing the head shake. And they're shaking their head, looking at how prices have rose so rapidly in this rapid uh, inflationary environment that we have. And we know the Fed has poured gasoline on the fire of inflation as the form of accelerant. So they are really a lot to blame here with this inflationary issue. But where do you see inflation going from a consumer perspective? Can prices just keep rising in this environment? Well, that depends very much on uh, fiscal policies. And as you hinted at, uh, it will depend mostly on the Federal Reserve. But you understand the Federal Reserve has abused its power for the last 40 years. For the last 40 years, they have pursued monetary policies that encourage consumption and that encourage asset bubbles. And we have evidence of that. They created an asset bubble uh, with the housing market between 2003 and 2007. And then after the great financial crisis, they started in December 2008 with QE1. At the time, I was asked when that would end. And I said, this is not QE1, it's QE infinity. Because once you embark on money printing, it's very tough to uh, abandon, to stop printing money unless you are prepared to take a significant recession. And this is now where we are today. The Fed, in my opinion, will increase interest rates, maybe 50 basis points, and over the next six to nine months, maybe to 1%, maybe one, one quarter. But then things could get so bad in the asset markets, because as you know, mortgage rates have almost doubled from the lows that we had 18 months ago. So doc, Dr. Faber, hold on. So, so you don't think the Fed's gonna go up to two and a half or two and three quarter percent like they're threatening to do? You think, you know, before the end of the year, you think they're gonna sh stop short of that? <laughs> Even two and a half or three percent would not curtail inflation because uh, we have in California at Stanford University an economist, uh, John uh, Taylor, and he established uh, a well known uh, model to calculate interest rates, the Taylor rule. According to that the rule, interest rates, the Fed fund rate should be over 9%. <laughs> over 9%. Yeah. Do you think the Fed will go to 9%? Never. No. Nope, nope, absolutely and not. So, you know, it's like in the 70s. Uh, everybody laughs about Robert Burns, who was at the time Fed chairman, and they say, well, he was a dove and didn't tighten monetary policy. But when inflation was as high as it is now, he increased the Fed fund rate to 11%. So, so this trend that we have of rising inflation and rising rates then is not really transitory in a short term sense. You're saying there's gonna be a longer trend and a more aggressive trend towards a rising rate environment unlike anything we've seen in 40 years. That's what I hear you saying, Mark. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying we, are headed into an inflationary spiral that is unstoppable for the time being, also because of the stupidity of government officials. 
you have to see this ESG, environment, social and governance issue that increases the price of everything. And if you have uh, embargoes against Russian oil, Russian resources, and so forth, and so on, you can become, of course, you can become energy independent. We can all have uh, solar panels on the roof and windmills in the gardens. And on Hill Hollywood Boulevard, we can have some windmills as well. But the cost is incredible. And what is cost efficient? Nuclear power, they don't want. That mm -hmm. they don't want. Right, right. The so, Keystone Pipeline, they don't want. I know. This is government policies, especially under Mr. Biden. Regulatory environment has become a disaster in the US. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting, you know, politicians, you know, they, they get desperate, they run scared during times like this, and they do things, they make knee jerk decisions. So that brings me to a question, you know, do you think that the Fed raising rates, is this going to send us into a recession? Or maybe are we at risk of stagflation like we saw in late 70s, early 80s? Yes, stagflation was very good because the economy did not contract. My view is that we are already in recession. Now, not for the rich people, and not for government officials whose salaries will always go up. Well, you bring up all these great points, but the world thinks the Fed is the financial savior of every financial crisis. And it sounds like they may have outdone themselves here since technically they te aren't a law abiding institution. They've got a blank check and they can do whatever they want. And so you're saying the, the chickens are coming home to roost then, I guess, is what you're saying, basically. What I'm saying is the Federal Reserve is the arsonist. They put on the inflationary fires. They put on bubbles. They create bubbles. And then when everything collapses, they come in and says, look, because of us, it's not worse than it already is. That's what the Fed does. The Fed and other central banks are criminal organizations. Yeah, it's, it's, I've said many times that the Fed is kind of like uh, the arsonist and the fireman all wrapped up together. Uh, so I love that, I love that term. But, so final question. Um, what's your best advice? What's your best advice for investors today who are, who are nearing retirement, who are retired, they can't take too much risk, but they're worried about inflation. Let's hear your best words of wisdom. Well, I think uh, my advice is this. Uh, the world has gone through lots of civil wars. It's gone throughout history wars where the participants in the war occasionally change sides and during periods of enormous wealth destructions. I was just lo looking at the history of Romania. They used to burn down entire villages and cities and so forth. I look at the history of the Mongolians. <laughs> they used to burn down and flatten like Baghdad, entire cities. And so we have periods of wealth and we have periods of destructions. And I believe the last 40 years, we've created an environment of a money illusion where everybody thinks, oh, everything is going up. And they disregarded the fact that, yes, it went up for rich people. And I'm not complaining because I also did benefit. I'm in the financial market, you understand? So I'm not complaining about myself. I am complaining as an economist and social observer and student of history that the financial center always applauded the Federal Reserve and nobody called them and said, this is going to lead to disaster. Yeah. And we are there, and I would prepare for everybody to lose money. Now, the question is, when everything goes up and uh, 
you are not moving up your assets at the same rate. Say stocks go up, I don't know, the S&P or the Dow by 20% and you up only 5%, you complain. Now people should think, oh, all these fang stocks, the meme stocks, the SPACs, they're down 70% with few exceptions. If I'm only down 10%, mm -hmm. I am doing very well relative yeah. to the rest. Of That's course, yeah, what sure. people should be thinking about. How do I lose the least? Yeah, yeah. Well, good, good advice. I think it's time like this where, you know, people, middle class especially, who can't afford to lose as much, need to be very, very cautious. So Mark Faber, Jeff Small, again, great being with both of you. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up button to give us a like and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel for new content each and every week.